Welcome to the series, Employee Health Services, Mind, Body, and Spirit. Employee Health is a section in the City of Albuquerque's Risk Management Division. Its mission is to promote a sense of community and increase wellness among city employees and their families by providing education and counseling about physical and mental health. And now, Mind, Body, and Spirit with Dr. Julia Bain. Hi, welcome to Mind, Body, and Spirit. My name is Dr. Julia Bain, and today we have a very special guest for you, the director, acting director of the Solid Waste Department, Jill Holbert. Welcome to the Thank program. You. You're fabulous. You're the first female director, and that's why you get some of this. <laughs> Isn't she fabulous? Yay, I'm a so proud. So we're going to talk about trash. You're in charge. Sure. sure. You are in charge of solid waste, mm -hmm. trash, garbage, the muck. You're the woman who makes what we have that we don't want anymore just disappear. We'll talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the magic. The yeah. magic behind your operation. Okay, well, maybe, Julie, you could start us off by just telling, um, what is the mission? of the City of Albuquerque Solid Waste Department. What is our mission? Well, we have this really kind of com complicated long mission statement, which is not a good mission statement, but let me tell you what it, what it encompasses. It encompasses the idea of service to our customers. It encompasses um, sustainability. We need to be a sustainable operation, both financially as well as in the environment. And it talks about the environment. We are in service to protect the environment, to provide service to our customers and protect the environment. Nice. That is a wonderful mission. Mm -hmm. It's a big, it's a big responsibility. And if we don't, if we can't do those things, no one can live here. Exactly, exactly. So once again, we have a city employee who is making it possible for over half of a million people to live here. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. <laughs> Thank you for your service. Well, and all of my staff. I mean, we're a tremendous, we're a huge department. How many people? 419 permanent positions and about 100 temporary positions every year. You know what? Do you love my new toy? Isn't I love this your fabulous? Toy. 400 and how many? 19 permanent positions. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. It takes a lot of people to do what we do, and we do a lot every day. So. I know, and it's kind of dangerous, too. It is. It is. You want to talk about the safety? Yes. Um, specifically, the, the drivers, the collection operation, both the commercial and the residential collection, and that's really what most people see anyway. You know, they see our our folks driving up and down, you know, city streets, highways, um, interstates. And solid waste is actually the seventh most dangerous job in the United States. Um, you know, it's up there with mining and agriculture and all of those because there are, I think it's more than 25 deaths each year per 100,000 people in that occupation. I had no idea. So it's, it is one of the most dangerous um, jobs and a lot of it again comes from the collection side our folks are in trucks in traffic day in and day out all day long because that's their job collections so they're having tra traffic accidents um, they're hit by people who don't see them you know um, we have employees who need to get out of the vehicle to do collections some of our recycling is is manual collection um, we have uh, laborers that assist drivers in backing into busy streets things like that they'll get hit periodically by other drivers um, so it's, it's very dangerous. There's issues with, you know, truck malfunctions or, um, you know, weather, ice, snow, things like that. So it's a very dangerous occupation. I've been the manager of employee health for 20 years for the mm -hmm. city of Albuquerque and um, have had to speak with many solid waste employees mm -hmm. um, to debrief them because there have been, because of fatalities. Mm -hmm you know, whether a coworker or a member of the public, it is dangerous business. It is, and when you think about how each of us gets in our car every day and drives to work, I mean, we're on the road, I don't know, probably your average person, maybe 20, 30 minutes each day, uh, twice a day. Mm -hmm. You know, our workers are out there for almost the entire shift, so it just shows the, the risk pool that they're in. You know, they're in traffic all day long. So that, it drives up, the, it drives up the, the chances of them either being themselves involved in an accident or being involved in an accident with someone from the public. In an enormous vehicle mm -hmm. that is difficult to see around, that has a collapsible inside 
I don't even know what you call it, whatever it is that pushes all the garbage together. The compactor. The yeah. compactor. Mm -hmm. And we also run Clean City. Clean City is out of the Solid Waste Management Department. So Clean City is your graffiti removal teams and your, your weed and litter crews. And we do highway cleanup. We actually do cleanup. You know, you'll see the signs, mm -hmm. men at work kind of on the highway. Yes. And so we have people that actually pick up litter along the, along the highway. And that obviously is very, uh, the interstates. And uh, that's obviously very dangerous as well. What kind of a safety program do you have? Well, we're trying to improve it. I mean, unfortunately, not a good enough one, I guess. Is what I'd like. And maybe you never get there. Maybe you never get to the point where you have a good enough safety program. But we definitely need to improve it. Um, we're looking at bringing in someone from the outside who has more of a safety professional background than we currently have in the department. Uh -huh. um, but we do a lot of training, and again, we, there's obviously room for improvement there. But we do a lot of training with the drivers. Um, we do training with the, we run the convenience centers where people take their own trash, and we run the landfill as well. Uh -huh. And so we have um, waste screening training, you know, what to look for, things that you don't want to get near coming in. Um, we recently, we recently started up an asbestos training program for our convenience centers. So wow. we could identify asbestos when it came in. We don't, we don't accept ex asbestos, but we found out we didn't train anybody to know what to look for. You know, so that was something new oh, for wow. us. So we did a complete asbestos um, identification and awareness training for all of our employees at the convenience centers. Mm -hmm. And since then, we've been seeing it. I mean, once you know what you're looking for, and right. you know, we either give it back to the um, to the person bringing it in. It gets, it's not something that we would accept. It's 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 actually a, a hazardous material or special waste. Mm -hmm. And um, we give it back to them, or if we miss them somehow, they got it out of their truck and took off. Then we actually have a, a contractor that'll come in that's that's licensed and. Um, trained to deal with asbestos. You know, <coughs> I've met a lot of city employees have looked me right in the eye and mm -hmm. have said to me, um, if I get home safe to my family at night, I've had a good day. Yeah. I've had a good day. And I would say that's true of all of our managers as well. I mean, we want to send home every employee fit, <laughs> all their uh -huh. limbs, all their digits, you know, right. safe to their family every night. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. And let's talk about that landfill. Sure. Um, we were talking before the program, and it's just so interesting to me because I really don't know much, that much about it. Mm -hmm. And I know it's it's uh, a science. It's a it's. Um, you were talking because I said, "Oh my gosh, do you have anything to do with rats?" Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about the dirt and the rats and the landfill and how long. And just tell us about it. Yeah. So it's, it is science. It's an engineered hole, and then it's an engineered pyramid at the end. <laughs> we basically dig, dig, dig a big hole and fill it with trash um, on the very most basic level. But there's a lot involved there because we do need to protect the environment. The, the worst offenders of groundwater contamination prior to 1990, 1990, the federal government stepped in and made stricter landfill regulations. Prior mm -hmm. to that, they were not lined. Prior to that, they leaked whatever liquid went into them. That was only 20 something yeah. years ago. And so a lot of landfills are built near rivers, um, near water courses, and the, the garbage juice, if you will, we call it leachate, would, it, motor oil, you name it, chemicals. Battery acid. Battery acid, all of that would mix together and leak into your waterways and into your groundwater. So it's a serious enough issue that the federal government took um, action. Good. And since 90, 1990, we build landfills differently. And one of the things we do, and we're required to do, is line it. We have a big plastic liner. I mean, it's plastic. <laughs> and it's rolled out the entire one cell of a landfill, uh, which is an operational unit, will be about 20, 22 acres for us in our landfill at Cerro Colorado. And the entire 22 acres is lined with plastic. And then we put garbage on top of that plastic. Wow. Um, every day that we put garbage in there, we compact it. We want to save airspace. Um, we want to make sure we can get as much garbage in that hole as possible. But we also need to keep fires down. There are um, methane gases, landfill gases, that are generated by rotting organics, rotting yard waste, rotting food, things like that. Uh -huh. And they create methane. Well, methane is basically natural gas. It's a highly explosive gas. So compacting the trash cuts down on the airspace, which makes it um, less likely that you get a fire in your landfill. Um, we also, <laughs> are we going to get a sound effect? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we also are required to monitor for methane because we can't build up methane. Um, and we flare it right now. We actually collect, we have a huge plumbing system within the trash. We're collecting both garbage juice, which again we call leachate, and we're collecting methane. 
And in both of those cases, we are having to treat that. We can't just let it happen. Um, the methane goes to a flare, which is a big fire, it's a big candlestick flare. It's a big um, a flame that burns off the methane. Like Basically, you see off an oil rig? Yeah, we're destroying it. We're destroying the methane because it's, it's explosive. Um, so we collect it and we destroy it. I didn't it. know that. And that flare runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, but we are working on capturing I mean, We're already capturing it, but rather than flaring it off for energy, and I'm kind of di digressing here. That's okay. <laughs> but instead of That's flaring it off for energy, we're actually going to send it to the jail on a pipeline, and they're going to burn it for energy and heat hot water, heat domestic hot water at the jail which is right next door, the Metropolitan Detention Center. Uh -huh. And so we're going to actually take something that we're just destroying now with no value um, and turning it into a fuel source, a replacement of fossil fuel. So it's a really good way to basically turn a negative into a positive. Fabulous. Yeah. And on the leachate side, on the garbage juice side, we, we pipe that as well from the bottom of the landfill into a lined pond um, where it just evaporates, the water evaporates off. If it ever overflowed the pond, and I don't think we've ever had that much come out. We're a very dry landfill being in the southwest. We don't have issues like, you know, other parts of the country where they get a lot of rainfall. That makes, that makes the issue of garbage juice much more difficult to manage. Right. We don't have that issue because of being in the desert. Um, but anyway, that gets, goes to a pond, and then that is either pumped out if it, it would have to go to a wastewater treatment plant if it became, you know, full. But we've never gotten full. Basically, this is very all. involved. And it's all to protect the environment. I mean, we don't just do it for the fun of it. <laughs> it's to protect the environment. And we take that very seriously. You know, that's our main mission is to protect the environment as well as provide customer service. But I don't know that the, the customers recognize the environmental aspects of our work. Well, let me just remind everyone in the audience mm -hmm. that in the 14th century, when half of Europe died of the Black Plague, mm -hmm. guess why? Trash. Trash and rats. And rats. And people, right. what people used to do with their trash was, oh, they just threw it out the window. Mm -hmm. Trash and human waste and heaven knows what, out the window, the dogs will get it. Mm -hmm. That was their recycling sustainability um, mindset, you know, around, I don't know, 1378. Oh, we'll just throw it out the window. Yeah. And we, We've talking about rats, yeah, talking about rats, I mean, that still would be an issue, obviously, with garbage. And so where, whatever we dump for the day at the landfill has to be covered at the end of the day with six inches of dirt. Yeah, talk about that. Yeah, it's basically to keep all vectors down, be it rats or mosquitoes or any other kind of um, disease-bearing. vectors. Vectors, that's the, <laughs> that's the official term. Anything that can be a disease carrier. Um, and, and in order to discourage that, all the garbage is covered with six inches at the end of each day. And where does all this dirt come from? The next cell. So I, I talked about a cell being 20 to 22 acres. That's one operating area. For the city of Albuquerque, we run a cell. We work in one cell from two to three years. And then we build the next cell. Oh. And so the next cell is another hole. I mean, we're really filling holes and then filling them up and building pyramids. Like How I deep said. is the hole? The hole is maybe, it depends. I mean, we're kind of in a... Uh, a landscape that has holes in it already. So I would say maybe 35 feet down and 65 feet up, a total about 100 feet of vertical of, of trash when we're done. And it lasts, and that hole is going to last two to three years that even whole though the population is growing? Yeah, the hole lasts two to three years. Um, and so when we're using the dirt for daily cover on the current cell, we're digging the next cell. We're digging the next hole. We're taking the dirt out of the next and hole. And moving the dirt from moving. that hole to what we've got going on right, right. now. For City daily employees cover. are doing that? Yes. Uh -huh. Ah, All of fabulous. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. So when we're ready to get to the next hole, we've already dug it out, basically, for the most part. Yeah. So we just keep doing that. <laughs> we're on cell. We're currently operating cell eight. Um, we opened the landfill in 1990. And there's a total of 18 cells planned for the landfill. So we're going to go out to 2070, approximately, for the life of that landfill, which is really good. I mean, it means that Albuquerque's done a really good job managing its trash and planning for the future. You know, there's, there's, there's places where you're not so lucky. Your landfill's filling up faster, and you need to find a place real quick <laughs> to fill. So we've made friends with trash. We've done a good job managing trash. Which leads me into my song. Okay. I warned you that it was going to come. Okay. It's kind of my M.O., but... You know, <clears throat> you want to sing with me? No. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love trash. Anything dirty or dingy or dusty. Anything ragged or rotten or rusty. Oh, I love, I love, I love it because it's trash. Do you remember that from Oscar? I do, I do. I remember oh, Oscar. Hold it. 
I'm ready. One? Of course, now I can't find it. Uh, how about this? <laughs> Let's go to that landfill. Okay. <laughs> Every know, day. That would be interesting. I've never been there. We operate seven days a week. What if a member of the public, I mean, is it our member, our, can the public look into the hole or is it just for city employees? Well, we restrict loads going to the landfill. Um, it's mostly our city garbage trucks. It's our 18 wheelers that come out of the convenience centers. Um, the convenience centers is really what the public is familiar with as far as dumping their own trash. Talk we about have, that. We have Eagle Rock, Montessa Park, and Don Reservoir. And that's where our small businesses and our public go to dump trash. And then we load up an 18 wheeler, um, big transfer trailer full of trash and we drive that up to the landfill um, so it, there's really limited access for the public other than tours you well, know you we have to have tours. controls about it yeah because but the traffic is a danger I mean the, the amount of garbage trucks we have going in and out of the landfill there's hundreds of loads a day going to but the you have tours we have tours of the landfill really yeah, mostly school children some reason school children find <laughs> trash more interesting than adults I want to go <laughs> yeah it is interesting mm -hmm. Wow um, so, okay, I, and we, I didn't plan this question, but it just okay. popped into my mind. How much trash, as a community, mm -hmm. do we make in a day? Oh, a day, we're, we're bearing about 1,500 tons, 1,500 tons a day coming from Albuquerque. It's been higher than that. You know, the economy actually, trash follows the economy. I'm getting off topic again, but trash follows the economy. So when we had a more vibrant economy, we actually had more trash. Um, but now that businesses have slowed down quite a bit, um, mm. people aren't buying as much stuff, there's less stuff to dispose of. So, you know, we get up toward 2,000 tons a day, and now we're around 1,500 tons a day. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. But that's a lot of trash. A ton is 2,000 pounds. That's a lot of trash. Each individual in Albuquerque will generate around a ton a year. Or each <gasps> household, I should say. Each household generates around a ton a year. A little over a ton a year. That's a lot. If you had to keep it at your house, if we didn't take it away... <laughs> <laughs> if you had to keep it at your house, you'd notice. You'd notice a ton a year. I know. That's why I say mm -hmm. you just, you're just like magic. You just make trash disappear. Well, we talked about that, though. It and, doesn't go away. I mean, that's the difference. I know. It doesn't. And uh, what would you say? Water, electricity, and trash. Yeah. All essential. We're basic services. Basic Again, services. if you had to deal with a ton of trash sitting around your house and your yard for the year, you know, it would change the way you live, I think. It would probably kill you. Well, I think you'd stop stop making so much trash. And I mean, the I vectors would come. And the vectors would come. And let's talk about yeah. recycling. Let's talk about recycling because I think that would be I think that would be the natural consequence of having to live with your trash for a year. I mean, I wouldn't want to do it. But if you had to live with your trash for a year, I think the first thing you'd do is stop making so much trash because <laughs> you wouldn't want to keep putting it in your garage or your backyard or wherever you're putting it. Um, so let's talk about recycling. There are a lot of items that are readily recyclable in Albuquerque and it's growing. Um, we're going to be adding more materials. We've got a new contract. The mayor headed up a public-private partnership with a company called Friedman Recycling. They're going to be taking our recyclables after we collect them and processing them and shipping them to factories to make new products. And so the number of materials that we're going to be recycling is growing, um, which means less trash, less amount goes to the landfill. Will we make money off of it? Um, we are going to make money, and people say, well, can we get that back? Well, we're going to be delivering carts to everybody. Just like everybody has a garbage cart, you're going to wow. get a recycling cart. And we Thank need to buy. Goodness. Make it easy for me, Make please. it easy. We I have know. a pilot out there right now with 10,000 households, and we found that no matter where you are in the city, if you're in the pilot, you recycle so much more because it's convenient. You I throw know. it in the cart, you wheel it out the same day as garbage. We come by with our fully automated truck, you know, with the arm, yeah. and we pick it up, and people really, really like that program. So we're going to be going citywide with the carts, and that's what we're doing with the money. Rather than giving it back okay. to the ratepayer, we're going to be increasing our level of service, the convenience of our service. Well, that makes perfect sense. So we have to buy carts. We have to buy new trucks that, that are automated. Okay. Um, so it's a big expense on um, the department side, but again, it's paid for by the efficiencies and the new contract with It's treatment. public health. Yeah, exactly. If this is a public health exactly. issue. I have never really thought of trash and solid waste as a public health issue. Oh, but definitely. But you know what? It is. It is. It's just it is. as important important as flu shots and immunizations mm -hmm. and making sure we have a fire department. Yeah. It's public health and it the is. police department and everything else are just as important as everybody else. Thank and you very much. There will always be things, I believe, that have to go to the landfill. There are things that are just either not recyclable or too costly to recycle for whatever reason, but that doesn't mean we can't recycle everything we can. You know, And that just will extend the life of the landfill even further. What can we throw in the cart? 
So when you get a cart, because that's specific, people right now use the bag program and we don't want people to use the new materials in the bag program, mainly because it's a person, it's a manual system. Somebody has to lift it. And let me tell you what the new materials are. Um, the new materials are one through seven plastics. Right now we're doing one and two only, so it's all plastics. It's rigid plastics like toys and planter pots. It's um, uh, cereal boxes and cracker boxes called chipboard. And right now we only do corrugated cardboard. We're going to continue to do that. We're going to continue all the materials we currently do, and we're just adding more materials to it. Um, it's small electronic waste like camera, digital cameras, cell phones, that kind of thing. Pots and pans, small appliances. I'm, a little, I'm waiting for the range to show up next to the cart, but <laughs> small appliances <laughs> should fit in the cart. Um, <laughs> refrigerator. Yeah, refrigerator. That's not a small appliance. Um, books, hardback and softbound books. Um, so all you can, kinds you of paper. You just toss all this in the cart? You Mixed to together, no bagging, no separation. Who's, who's, okay, who's going to separate all this? That goes to Friedman. So we're still going to do all the collections. Oh, okay. We have been trying to do this for years. I know Albuquerque, I, you know, I'm tired of apologizing for our recycling program, let me tell you. People really want to recycle here. And the problem was that we had a very small, very old system of processing. And we did not have the capacity to process any more materials, even though these are recyclable materials. And people would tell me, it's recyclable. I know it's recyclable. We don't have the capacity, or we didn't have the capacity in our existing processing facility that we ran ourselves. We didn't have the capital to invest in you know, basically making a brand new state-of-the-art facility. Mm -hmm. And so the mayor really spearheaded the idea, let's go for a public-private partnership. Let's do this right. And so we put out a, a request for proposals. Friedman was a selected vendor. We signed the contract in October um, of last year. And they are currently taking all our materials and shipping them to El Paso, where they have a facility. But they will be building a facility here within the next year in Albuquerque. For us? For us. Well, they'll take other materials, too. The whole idea is we want them to recycle. We want more recycling, whether we do it or whether the university does it or whether a business does it. We want more recycling. So Friedman will be here and be able to take our materials as well as other you know, private materials and recycle them. And so they're going to be able to recycle all, or they currently are in their El Paso plant, all of these new materials. And I expect the recycling rate in Albuquerque to go sky high. I mean, I really do, because it becomes convenient. Uh -huh. The number of materials goes up significantly. Um, the number of people who recycle will go up. And that's based on our pilot information, because when you make it easy and convenient for them, yeah, they'll do it. They're Plus, on board. Plus, people love Mother Earth. Yeah, they do. They do. Do you know, um, EPA just came out and said one of the, one of the uh, best things you can do for the environment is to recycle. You know, because a See? lot of people in their household, I mean, really, I think people feel not empowered to make a difference. And uh -huh. you can for recycling. And like I said, EPA just said it's the one thing you can do for the environment every day. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> right. I'm telling you what, you know your stuff. I've been in trash a long time. <laughs> Yes, how long have you been in the trash business? We my whole career. Yeah, my whole, about 25 years. Yeah. And what was, the, what was the draw for you? It was a work-study <laughs> job in college. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I worked at a recycling center in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and it was my work-study job. And I've talked to a lot of people who've been in recycling specifically who got their start in college. I mean, it's an amazing way to get a career. And so I started out in recycling, and then as I grew my career, I became more and more responsible for the big picture, for all the trash, the household hazardous waste, you know, all of the litter, all of that. Wow. Mm -hmm. Composting, recycling. So would you say you fell into trash? I fell into trash. <laughs> <laughs> I literally have fallen into trash, too. <laughs> Believe me. I, I couldn't help it. <laughs> all right, well, we only have a few minutes. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure we get, you know, like get your message out. Mm -hmm. So words of wisdom, what do you want the community to know about solid waste, city of Albuquerque? What, what can we do to help you? Well, you know, we were talking about this earlier, and I think that the idea of recycling, again, is so important. And we've talked about that. But I think what I really want that maybe we didn't talk about enough is the, the employees of the Solid Waste Management Department that they go out and do their job every day. We run seven days a week. You know, different parts of our department are active seven days a week. Um, and all of our employees are part of the community. You know, they're neighbors, they're friends. They do amazing things day City in and day out. City employees are the public also. They are. They are. And I get letters, I get calls from people saying, oh, you know, your, your garbage man helped me do X, Y, or Z. And I think people are sometimes surprised. And I'm not surprised. I mean, I'm happy when, when the guys, the women in, in the job are doing great things, but I'm not surprised because they are part of the community. Mm -hmm. 
And I think, I think they feel like I do. They do a very basic service. We touch everybody in the city. Um, households, we pick up trash every, you know, your, your trash would be picked up once a week. Businesses, sometimes more than once a week. So mm -hmm. we really touch every business, every household in the city. And we have a great group of employees who are very dedicated to their jobs yes. and who really feel, I think, that sense of being part of the community and providing a public good mm -hmm. in the community. So mm -hmm. I really wanted to get that out there because in addition to what you can do, I think it's important to, to really see what the city employees are doing in the, in the solid waste department. Absolutely, absolutely. I think sometimes city employees, um, we get a lot of bad press. And um, stories aren't covered um, where the city employee, you know, helps the woman who slipped on the ice and fell right. down by her car. Right. Or the person who fell over and they were having a heart attack and our employee jumped off the truck and provided CPR. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't get covered. Um, and just the employees who go in every day and they're cheerful mm -hmm. on the phone with the public. Um, and, and kind and friendly and helpful and, and take the identity of I am a public servant, I am your public servant mm -hmm. very seriously. Mm -hmm. And I just, I am so pleased that, that you are at the helm. Oh, thank because you. Because you are thank very you. knowledgeable thank and um, 30 minutes go by so quickly. I hope that <laughs> perhaps you will come back and we can chat again sometime sure, about I'd love solid to. waste. I'd love to. It's, it's been a very interesting program. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anything else? That's about it. <laughs> good to go? Yep, good to go. Okay, thank you, Jill. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. And thank you for watching. Remember, recycle. Um, don't take your solid waste department for granted. Um, don't take our employees for granted. Don't take life for granted. This is a very special gift to be here. Um, this is Dr. Julia Bain. Until next time, be happy and be well. This has been Employee Health Services Mind, Body, and Spirit. For more information, call the City of Albuquerque's Employee Health Services at 768 4613. Let the Employee Health Services staff let you be your best at work, at home, and at play.